Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Solo Podcast. My name is Jackson and I am your hostess. Um, I am also the dyer behind Stella Luna Fiber Co. And I will have my website linked down below as well as links to my social media, my Ravelry, and have all of the project information down below as well for you to look at. Um, if you are new, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, I did not film... Well, I did, I did film a podcast episode last week. I didn't like how it turned out. And too much has been going on to have refilmed the podcast until today, which is today is September 12th and it is 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, because my husband and I are leaving tomorrow to go visit his family. We are going to Arkansas to go trout fishing. Um, so I've been trying to get our house ready for us to leave, get all the laundry done, get, I still need to pack, but that'll happen later on today. Um, get the stuff for the dogs ready since they'll be going to the vets to be boarded, um, which I will be doing once I finish this podcast episode because I am procrastinating because I hate taking them to the boarding place. I don't hate it. The boarding place is great and it's at the, the vet hospital that we take them to, but I don't like not having them in the house. So um, I'm kind of putting it off, but that's okay. But I figured I can film my podcast episode. The puppies can hang out here for a little bit longer and then I'll take them around lunchtime. So that is the plan. Um, Y'all will probably be watching this episode on Thursday. That's when I'm planning on this being uploaded. Um, it's gonna be edited today. It's gonna be ready to be uploaded today, but I am going to schedule the upload until Thursday. But, um, anywho, that's kind of what's going on. Uh, I also had to get a lot of orders done. So again, we've been busy. We have been busy and we like being busy, but I don't like having to clean the house. <laughs> so anywho, to dive right into finished objects, um, I am excited to say I actually have a couple. Um, some of them are very small and probably don't feel like finished objects, but they are finished. So that's primarily what matters. But I'm going to start off with the bigger one and the stuff that y'all have seen. Look at them. They're done. I finished these last week. Um, these were my finished objects in the little bit that I filmed last week and just never uploaded. But these are my Cabin in the Woods socks. Um, so the main color is Cabin in the Woods. Contrast color is Free Swim. This is from my summer camp, summer collection of yarn. Um, I am really happy with how these turned out. They're gorgeous. They're coming with me to Arkansas. Um, these are just regular old vanilla socks with a cut-in afterthought heel. And this is on my merino sock base. So I have not bl actually blocked these. They have been worn. Um, but since we're going to Arkansas, I'm not too worried about getting my own socks blocked. It was more like I need to get the gift stuff that I have knitted blocked. <laughs> more than anything else because I want those to at least when recipients get them to be um, for them to look a little bit more professional um, I'm going to show more than just what I have finished but it's just to kind of give you the full spectrum of what's going on here we have a bunch of baby socks so um, <laughs> the, this is kind of bad on my part but I also have an issue with if it's out of sight out of mind um and so I had been working on y'all will have seen at least these two um if you go back a couple of episodes to the spring but um I was knitting baby socks for my best friend uh she had her first child at the end of May very beginning of June kind of time like very very end of May um, so he is three months old and I just realized that I never sent her baby socks. I was doing some cleaning. I rearranged my office recently and was reminded of, oh shit, pardon my language, but oh shit, I never finished the baby socks I said I was going to send her and, um, I need to do that. So these are the pair that were not finished. 
Um, I had half of one baby sock done and then on Monday, so yesterday, um, I finished the second one. Um, I had finished the first one Friday of last week, cast it on this one yesterday evening at like 4.30 and then finished it at like 8.30, 9 o'clock last night. Um, and in the middle, <laughs> cast it on these, which are not going to Mora. Um, these are going to my mother-in-law. Um, I'd originally planned on sending Mora three baby socks, but seeing as I'm kind of super late, I'm just going to send her these two, um, in hope that they fit. And if they don't, um, they're really cute as ornaments because they look like little stockings or they could make for really cute keepsakes or she can save them for, um, I imagine she's going to have more than one child. She and her husband come from very large families. But uh, these are the ones I worked on Saturday and Sunday. Um, this was my stress knitting <laughs> while watching Ole Miss uh, play football against Tulane on Saturday. Um, but they're super cute. And uh, my mother-in-law has, I think, a. I think what she said was a friend of hers is about to be a first time grandma. Um, and so her, I don't know if it's her daughter, if it's her daughter-in-law is pregnant, but they're um, expecting a little baby boy. And so my mother-in-law commissioned a pair of little blue socks for this friend of hers. So I have baby socks galore over here. These are coming with me to Arkansas. I have a little envelope ready to mail these off to Mora and stuff because I will be mailing some stuff after I drop the dogs off at the vet's office because that'll put me really close to the post office. Um, I, yeah, I'll be sending my dad his socks because I still haven't sent them to him, but they are washed and blocked and ready to go and in a um, little mylar bag or mailer bag, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'll be dropping these off. I need to weigh the envelope though, just to make sure I have enough postage. Um, I have plenty of stamps, but I would like to know how much I need to put on there so I don't have to just sit there forever at the post office and buy more stamps when I don't need more stamps. Um, well, I can bring my stamps with me. Sorry, that's getting rambly. Um, but those are my finished objects. We have baby socks and a full pair of socks. Um, very exciting. To continue on with kind of sock talk, um, I will show my current sock whip. So I showed these the past couple of episodes, but um, these are my birthday cast on socks from last year. And I'm just doing regular vanilla socks. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, the baby socks are just random minis that I have that are 75, 25. Um, sorry, <laughs> we're all over the place, it's fine. Um, anywho, these are my birthday cast on socks. We're just doing plain old vanilla socks and this is knit out of Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. She is a natural dyer based out of Northern Ireland. Um, and we are on the toe. So um, I've been endeavoring to do about 20-ish rows a day on this. So we made pretty quick work of the rest of the sock. Um, and I just, I put the toe down once I got it started. Um, I'll be probably working on this in the car tomorrow and probably get these finished up and cast on the second pair. Um, but these will be coming with and hopefully I will have two finished socks pretty soon. Um, I might hold off on doing the heel until I get the second sock to the heel component. Undecided yet though. Um, I might also just do the heel so I have one completed sock and I don't have to come back to this one. But that is what we're working on. It's in a little, what is it? Magner Bagco or Magner Bag. Um, they're based out of Athens, Georgia. So a somewhat local to me maker. Um, just state adjacent but uh, that is what is living in this little project bag I bought this project bag as a birthday present for myself last year so it felt perfect to house my birthday cast on in this but um, 
So that is work in progress number one. Oh, I guess we'll go with this. We'll go with the big boy or big girl. If you gender your knits, <laughs> I don't know. I keep calling my habitation throw she because because she, she's thick. Um, I don't know. Anywho, uh, this is my habitation throw. It is a pattern by Helen Stewart. And I am knitting this out of Woolberry Fiber Co's 2020 Lord of the Rings advent calendar, which I absolutely love. She is a very skilled dyer and um, she makes beautiful advent calendars and beautiful yarn. And I want to be like her when I grow up one day, even though her and I are like the same age. She might be a year older than me, but she's not much older than me. <laughs> but anywho, so last time I showed this, I think was down here. I did move my stitch marker because I did film and um but anyways so we have started a new color and I don't think that that was part of the last episode I uploaded but so we're making a little bit of progress. We're on color 14. Um I've been working on gift knits and things like that so this has not been a priority but I think once I get some of the things that feel kind of pertinent done i.e. birthday socks for myself and uh, I have one more like I say one more it's not really one more I do have some more gift knitting to do um, I have one more gift knit from last year and um, that I need to finish but it's a little brioche ear warmer for my mom and that will be coming with me the yarn and the the needles I need for that will be coming with me to Arkansas so um, Potentially, I might get that done while I'm gone. I might have a couple finished objects. We shall see. Uh, and I will show the yarn and stuff because I'm going to show at the end of the episode some of the things that are coming with me. But um, this is not coming with me. This, even though this would be a lovely project to work on while there, um, it's, I think, a little bit too big. And I'm not really sure how we're going to be traveling to Arkansas. Like, we are taking my car and driving to Memphis tomorrow to meet up with Brandon's family. Um, that's where his family is all from. But, um, and we're going to stay at his parents' house for like a day and a half, two days, uh, before we leave for Arkansas. So I'm not sure if we're taking three cars or if we're taking two cars. And, um, theoretically, I think my car is larger than everybody else's car. I do have a Honda Pilot, um, so you can fit a lot in there. So it might be that Kim and Wayne, which is my mother and father-in-law, and uh, my brother-in-law's family all squeeze into Kim and Wayne's Jeep because they've already got the, the um, car seat in there for my niece, uh, or squeezing into my brother-in-law's car, um, something like that. And then potentially we take my car as car number two that or we're taking three and everyone just has their own car I really don't know um we shall see but at least theoretically if we take my car everyone can load up all of their fishing gear all of their um luggage and waders and stuff like that in my car theoretically and then you know at least that gives a little bit more room in other vehicles but um so we'll, we'll see what happens but um so I'm trying not to bring a ton of knitting with me <laughs> But it is a week. We're going to be gone like a full week. So we have to pack enough clothes because I don't know what the laundry situation is going to look like at the cabin we're staying at. Um, and we have to bring all this fishing gear and waders and boots to go over the waders and stuff like that because um, I guess that's what you need to go trout fishing. I've never gone trout fishing. Um, I'm very excited to go trout fishing. I am hoping, I think my father-in-law knows how to fly fish and I'm hoping he, if he, if I'm remembering correctly, if he does know how to fly fish, I'm hoping he brings his um, fly fishing rod and can show me how to fly fish because I really want to learn. Um, but anyways, tangent all to say, I only have so much room to bring knitting with me, um, even though I need to bring enough to keep me occupied during downtime. But uh, the plan is also to, if the sun's up, I'm out on the river. 
but um, anyways, back to knitting. <laughs> Next up in an old fringe supply coat toffee bag, um, I have my beautiful little Bennett sister shawl. <laughs> we, I'm so sorry if this is so chaotic, y'all. Um, Bennett sister shawl, we're making good progress. Um, I've not picked this up recently because again, I've been working on baby socks, but we are making good progress. We have started our little stockinette section. You can see it a little bit better if it will quit focusing on my face. There we go. Look at it. So cute. I did probably be able to see it a little bit. So right here, I missed moving my marker. So the pearls are a little bit up, but I don't think that'll be noticeable once it's done. It's just noticeable right now to me because the, you know, it's a small little section. Um, and it doesn't really matter too much because again, like I'm doing my increases on this side and, um, so as long as my increases are correct, you know, it doesn't really matter. And the stockinette triangle doesn't go all the way up to this side. It like stops like here-ish. So that's what she's looking like. This is being knit out of my gold sparkle sock right now. So this is gold sparkle. And um, once I get to the halfway point, I will be adding in my Surrey cloud lace face um, to hold double with the gold sparkle and um, this will all be knit out of Sassanac so my Into the Highlands collection which is inspired by Outlander and they are I'm obsessed with this collection so go check it out I've got pictures of it over on Instagram and it's in the shop right now so um, if you want some go order some uh, and it will be up for a while, probably like most of this fall, as well as all of my other fall collection colorways are in the shop right now. So my Equinox collection from when I first started dyeing is back in the shop. Um, my Cozy Mysteries collection from last year is in the shop, as well as Goddess of the Hunt. That collection is in the shop. So um, just know nothing's getting dyed while I'm gone. Um, so it will be a little bit of a delay. I did have an order come in yesterday and um, so it won't be dyed until I get back. But uh, I do have a ton of yarn. So if you want some, we're stocked right now. But anyways, next up in my By the Bay Bag Co tote bag in this beautiful maroony red. Um, this was a birthday present from my mother-in-law and my father-in-law a couple, maybe like two years ago. Um, I love this bag. It is great because it's kind of like the porter bin and stuff, but you have like tote bag handles so you can hang it easier on stuff than the, the porter bin from Fringe Supply Co. was. But uh, living in that bag is, or in this bag, the By the Bay Bag Co. bag, um, is my A Girl's Best Friend shawl. This is a pattern by Isabel Kramer. My light just died, I think. We'll see if it survives. Um, anyways, if it dies, it dies, and I am sorry, y'all. Uh, but this is a pattern by Isabel Kramer, and I am knitting this out of my Woolen Witch Collection colors. Yep, okay, my light's dead. So we'll be, be roughing it from here on out. But this is my Woolen Witch Collection. Um, this is the Divination colorway. We have Familiar, which is the dark purple. Uh, it has little pops of contrast between these colors. And then we have Grimoire, which is our beautiful moody denim blue. And we are on the second set of teardrops. So I've done my make fives and um, I am back to working on the right side and we will start decreasing the make fives on the next row for this. Um, and I really like it. So this will not be coming with me to Arkansas as well. Um, I'm debating whether or not I wanna bring my Bennett sister shawl. It would be an easy thing to bring with and work on because it doesn't require a lot of pattern reference, but this one requires a lot of thinking 
when doing the teardrop section and um so like and I don't imagine there's gonna be the kind of like quiet downtime to really work on this um other than like really early in the morning because I am up at like six at the latest most days but anyways so that's probably not going to come with Bennett sister shawl unsure if that's going to come with um in terms of things that might be coming with that require thinking <laughs> we have a new cast on and I'm hoping this shows up well but I'm not sure especially now that my light has gone out but you can still like kind of see it um this is the back yoke which i should hold it up the right way this is the back yoke of the ingrid slipover so we have done the moss stitch section we have done our little it's probably not going to show up super great but um let's see we've done the little eyelet section with girder ridges I have completed the little mock cable X's that are on here, and we have started on the ribbing component to um, start, I think, yes. Okay, so I know where I'm at. Um, sorry. <laughs> but uh, I am just about to start the next row that I will start increasing for the under armholes. Um, but we have this started. And this is in two porter bins because I am alternating skeins. So I have the smaller porter bin and I have my big old, big old porter bin. But, um, and I am also <laughs> using six skeins of yarn at a time because three skeins are for one color set and then three skeins are for the next alternating whatever you want to call it. Um, but I am knitting this out of one strand of Woolberry Fiber Co. Smoke. So on her Berry Tweed base. So here's Smoke. It's reading very black now that my light is out, but it is very much just a charcoal kind of variegated gray um, on Tweed. And then I am holding it I guess triple with my tweed sock base which is the same base but um on my charcoal color and then um charcoal on my surrey cloud base so i think that this will make for a really great very wearable slip over for me i think that this kind of charcoal will look great with a lot of the things that i have in my wardrobe right now um and be more wearable here in Tennessee on the whole. Um, if you don't know, false falls and false winters are common here in Chattanooga. Um, we're lucky if we get flurries that never stick. Um, very rarely, especially the past couple of years, have we gotten like a legitimate snowstorm that you have anything to like play in. Um, so it does, it just doesn't get cold enough all the time to wear a full pullover with long sleeves, even though I love pullovers and stuff, but it just, it, like, it, you can't really wear them until January. So I was thinking a slipover would be great. It would be faster because I don't have to knit sleeves. <laughs> and, um, I also just really like how the Ingrid slipover looks. It's very cute and textured and um, yeah, I think it will just be really nice. So the goal is to try and have the Ingrid slipover done by, uh, done the week before Rhinebeck. So we shall see. Ingrid slipover will be probably coming with. Um, it's not crazy big, there's just a lot of yarn and if I can get started on the front yoke while on vacation, that would be really cool. But that is it for knitting. Um, I do have some knitting plans that are coming with um, in the event that I finish my socks and stuff. So I'm thinking, now that I'm thinking about it, I will bring my birthday cast on socks and I will bring my Ingrid slipover. 
and those will be the whips that come with. And then um, if I finish things really quickly or whatever, or I wanna cast on something new, I do have two options. So this is my BFL Erin base, and this is in the Grimoire colorway. Um, my mom picked this out and she has requested some ear warmers. My mom plays a lot of tennis, albeit she is down and out for the count in the tennis department for the most part currently. Um, she's had the <laughs> misfortune of her, of having to um, have her hip replaced and she still has to do the other one and I'm not sure, she I don't think has a plan yet for when the other one will be done, but she is fully healed from her hip replacement because it's been three months. But um, <laughs> then she learned a couple weeks ago that she had torn a tendon in her arm last spring and um, it was like 2.25 millimeters away from the bone. <laughs> so she had to have surgery on Tuesday of last week. Tuesday of last week? I think Tuesday of last week. The Tuesday after Labor Day. Um, and so she's gonna have to wait another three months before she can really play tennis. I think she's cleared to do like footwork training with tennis, um, but obviously she can't hold a racket. But footwork is always something that's good to work on and she is also going and seeing my mom has a personal trainer because she's a badass and a very fit woman in her late 60s um but like so she's still seeing her personal trainer they're just modifying for what she can do post surgeries and stuff but um and she's going and watching tennis anyways i'm telling you my mother's life story good lord uh but i'm making her a little um ingeborg ingeborg um, ear warmer headband thing. Um, it's just called the Ingeborg. It's by Petite Knit. I have knit one before in the past and I knit it in a day and so um, so it's funny that I have not made my mom's one but uh, she won't need it for a little while. I just want to get it done and mail to her so she can use it when walking the dog or going and watching tennis matches and stuff with her team. You know things like that. So that's coming with It'll be a nice little instant gratification. The Ingeborg is like, uh, I don't know if it's Fisherman's Rib or if it's just single color brioche, but it's like that kind of stitch pattern where it's like real squishy, real full, real pretty and stuff. And then you like weave, a, you weave through the front and pull it tight. So it kind of creates like a little bit of like kind of that turban type of look with it. Um, it's very cute. I really like it. I like knitting it the first time and I probably will knit myself another one at some point. But the other <laughs> skein of yarn I'm bringing is my rainbow trout. <laughs> um, I was like, this is a perfect project to bring for trout fishing. So um, I am bringing a skein of rainbow trout on my BFL sock base. So it is a little bit more muted because that's just kind of how the dye takes up when on my BFL sock base but um and it's much more like bright and vibrant on like my merino bases uh just in case you're curious because this is part of my goddess of the hunt colorways um so this is in the shop right now it does come out significantly more vibrant on merino sock but i this was like my example skein that i dyed up um or my test game, whatever you want to call it. And um, so I kept it for myself. But that is coming with, and I'm housing it in this bag by Knitting Nelly from her summer camp stuff because it feels appropriate for staying in a cabin and trout fishing. Um, I am undecided on a pattern for the rainbow trout socks. It will probably end up being vanilla socks just because it's easy. Um, the next like new cast on socks will probably be textured because also I have made some changes on my plans for my birthday cast on. So um, just to say here and hold myself accountable, um, this is Plies and Hellhounds that I got at Rhinebeck or India Untangled last year. Um, this is the Ravishing, I think, colorway in her or in their Marie Cutie. Base. So this is 75% Superwash Coradale, 25% Nylon, 
and uh, you get 443 yards per 100 grams. And this is fingering weight, but she, she's plump. Like this looks like almost like DK kind of plump. Um, but anyways, um, I have decided that I want this to be my birthday cast on this year, just to switch things up a little bit. And I think that this would be a really good skein for a textured project. So that is the plan for the things coming with. Um, I am going to be bringing a couple of pairs of socks with me. So, um, cause it is looking like it's gonna be kind of chilly, like uh, lows in the fifties and highs in the mid to upper seventies while we're there in Arkansas. Um, so I'm going to bring my cabin in the wood socks. I am going to bring my kindling socks in my autumn bonfire, um, one of a kind color. Um, this is a slightly off skein of autumn bonfire. So autumn bonfire tends to have a lot more bright oranges and, um, green speckles, but, uh, I really like how these turned out. These are the kindling socks by Lindsay Fowler and I knit this on my BFL sock base. So they're very cozy and lovely. And so I have the two tall socks with the cabin in the woods and the kindling socks. And then I've got two shorty socks that I'm going to bring with. So these are just some vanilla shorty socks with a cut in afterthought heel. Actually, both of these are, um, this one has a short rib, but this is out of my apple picking colorway again from my Equinox collection. So it's from the same collection as the, uh, autumn bonfire colorway. So this is, I think in the, in the shop, don't hold me to it. Um, I think I might've only put a couple of the more popular colors of, uh, Equinox, but, um, leave a comment below if you want this in the shop, cause that's an easy thing to add. And I will be bringing my computer with me. Um, and then I have these super cute little self-striping shorty socks. Um, oh, also the apple picking is in my BFL sock base. Uh, this is in the Brit sock base by Nomadic Yarn. So it's her BFL sock base. Um, and this is in the Practical Magic self-striping colorway. And I just have a random gray mini as the uh, contrasting heel for my cut in afterthought heel. And I think I finished these maybe like last year or the year before. I don't really remember, but I knit these really fast. But self-striping knits up really quickly. Um, and I just really like these and I'm ready for fall and Halloween. So I want to bring these with, me. but that's what I'm bringing with me. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else to kind of include here. Oh, um, Leah H, uh, 8290 something, um, drawing a blank on your handle. Uh, I will have it down here. You are the giveaway winner for the skein of healer. Um, I have not heard from you, but if you can shoot me an email, um, between now and the next episode, um, that would be awesome. Uh, I need your mailing address so I can send you your skein. If I don't hear from you by the time of the next episode, I will be drawing a new giveaway winner, but that is it. I think for this episode, um, I hope y'all have enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Um, and I should be back next Thursday with a new episode because we will be back on Wednesday. Uh, and I will probably film Thursday. If it's not up Thursday, it'll be up Friday. But thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.